All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. Chandra Carr. So good to see you. I am the Director of Practicum Education here at Wayne State School of Social Work. Welcome back to those who have been with us all week to our boot camp and welcome to our first time viewers. We are so glad to have you here. We again have another treat for you and I am going to introduce our special guest today. We have Nancy Keller McKinnon. She has spent 39 years of service with the state of Michigan, working in various roles in CPS department, including a supervisor and a program manager. Nancy also serves on death row review on the board of directors at Child Hope, was vice president of Kids Talk Advisory Board, and served as the lead contact in Wayne County for the FBI Department of Homeland Security for victims of human trafficking. She is also a part of the Office of Practicum Education team, which we are so wonderfully glad that she is with us. She is a liaison here with us and a practicum instructor, and she is at the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office as that practicum instructor for us. So we have such a treat here for you all, and I know this is definitely the session that everybody has been waiting on, <laughs> those assignments and how to get to them. So Nancy is the one to help you out. So I am going to give the floor to Nancy. Thank you so much for being here today. Welcome, welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Dr. Carr, and good morning to everyone. I'm so excited to meet you all and to welcome you to this exciting year of your BSW learning. And I do um, love Dr. Carr, thank you. And I do, um, I'm excited to share about process recordings because as Dr. Carr has mentioned, I am both a faculty um, instructor and a faculty liaison. So I have the pleasure of reading a lot of process recordings. So I will have a bit to say about them and hopefully alleviate a lot of your anxiety. But before I get to process recordings, I also just want to share a few tips for success um, as um, I have had the opportunity to supervise many students in my years of service. And first of all, I just want to encourage you, this is an exciting time in your um, education. This is where you get to put all of your, whether it's been years or just a few semesters of learning into practice where you actually go to practicum. And I hope you enter practicum with an attitude of openness and willingness to learn. And the first tip that I wanna share with you is go to the School of Social Work website. I can't tell you how many times I'm surprised when students talk to me and tell me, they never went to the website and it's like, this is, you know, this is like your, this is where you find your manual. This is where you find your documents. And I'm just going to give a few quick um, stories that I don't want to scare anyone, but the manual's there. And a few years ago, I had a student that was placed in one of the um, DP, uh, uh, Detroit public schools. And I was going for a site visit. And when I arrived there, Dr. Vitti was there. He's the head of Detroit Public Schools. And the student had called him without ever calling me as the practicum liaison, without ever talking to her practicum instructor. And she was actually filing a complaint against her practicum instructor. She did not follow the manual. And this, and she thought she was going to get the practicum instructor in trouble for the way the instructor was talking to her, when in reality, she got a corrective action plan for not following Wayne State's policies and procedures. So the website, website is like, please go there, read the manual. It will answer a lot of questions for you. Another quick example, a student last year did not look at the dates. 
and missed the whole first week of practicum second semester because our dates did not match the school year for beginning of classes. So it's very important. You're adults. We want to treat you as adults. Take responsibility. Um, any questions there before I move on? I don't see anybody's hands up. Okay, next. Um, as we enter into practicum, I want to talk about success. And the first thing is time and attendance. Um, it's critical. And I realize things happen. People's cars break down. People have blowouts. But it's important just to communicate with your practicum instructor. Um, and you need to find out what the best method of communication is. Um, do they want a text in the morning? Do they want a call? How do they want you to, um, to communicate that you're running... Do they just want to know if you're 15 minutes late? Do they want to know if you're ill? It's just important to communicate. And then I will harp on time log um, one, because you need to treat that as that's your form of employment. And as a practicum liaison, I'm going to be fully honest. I'm, I'm going to look at every student that's assigned to me. I'm going to look at their time log once a month. And I am always horrified when I see blank time logs because a, a school of social work also looks at those time logs. You can't have a bl blank time log. And a lot of times students tell me, well, I keep my own personal time log. Not good enough. You need to enter your hours weekly because you're going to forget. And it's just treated as it's your employment. Complete your hours weekly in your time log. And that's how you stay up to date. And another um, important point is dress for success. What does that mean? It kind of means on where are you serving your practicum? Um, when I was in child welfare, you can't come into a child welfare office in, I don't know what they call it, I'm all the boyfriend jeans, all beat up jeans and t-shirts with slogans. That's not appropriate dress. Um, at the Emmy's office, um, the first day I just went for a barbecue and I had, I, I don't remember, white capri pants and open-toed shoes. The, I was just there for a barbecue. I wasn't there to work, but they stopped me right away and said, hey, you can't go out like that. You can't have open-toed shoes. So you need to find out what the appropriate dress is. And then I'll just touch on a little bit. Not everybody has money to go shop at Macy's or Nordstrom's or Von Mar, and that's okay. You know what? You can find professional-looking clothes at Target, Walmart, and you can even go to resell. I'm on a weight loss journey, so I've been shopping at ThreadUp. And right now they have free shipping. Or you can go to Salvation Army. You can find clothes there with tags still on it. So you don't have to spend a ton of money because we know as students you don't have a ton of money. But you need to look professional. I'm old school. Not everybody irons. But a few creases in the pants look very professional. But you need to find out what the culture is in your office. In child welfare, you don't want to wear a $300 suit where a little baby's going to throw up all over you or you're going to sit in something and maybe you need to have extra clothes with you. But ask your practicum instructor what is appropriate attire. And I don't want to get into anybody's business about tattoos and piercings, but I can tell you in child welfare, those judges are going to tell you they don't want to see all that in the courtroom. And I can't tell you how many interns I've had to send home because they weren't dressed appropriately, whether their dress was too short or they had on a sleeveless shirt and all their tattoos were showing. So early in your placement, find out what the appropriate approved uh, attire is. And maybe on Fridays, if uh, most interns are not there on Fridays, but sometimes there are jean days and you can wear things like that. Or if you're there, like say for Halloween, people can wear different things, but ask. Communication is important. Next, um, be open to learning. And what do I mean by that? You as an intern need to be having weekly clinical supervision. And as a practicum uh, liaison, when I'm reading um, process recordings, a lot of students have told me, well, I never meet with my practicum instructor. That is concerning for me. And I, I say, don't run right to Dr. Carr and tell her that. 
first talk to your practical instructor and find out what's going on. Yesterday, I met with our interns and we had like a group supervision and I explained. Sometimes we're going to do individual, sometimes we're going to do group, but we have to do a mix. When I was in child welfare, I had 100 CPS workers reporting to me and 12 supervisors. It's crisis intervention sometimes, and so sometimes we could have individuals, sometimes we couldn't, but you do need to have reflective supervision, especially when you're working on your learning plan and when you're doing your process recordings. Um, next, a very big pet peeve of mine is your email. A lot of students tell me um, they can't keep up with all their email, and I know you're doing time management tomorrow, um, and so some students will tell me they have to use their family email. I'll just tell you, for example, I teach at two different universities, so that's two email accounts. I have a county email because I work for the ME's office, so there's two emails there. And then I have a personal email. So that's four emails. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to accept that you can't keep up with your email. As a professional, you have to find a way, and I can tell you right now, I am not going to respond to your family email account when I want to talk to you about why your time log isn't up to date or why your process recording, why I'm returning your process recording for corrections. I am only going to respond to your Wayne, count, Wayne State email. That is what we do as professionals. I don't know who is on your personal family account. I don't want your kids reading what I'm talking to you about. So as a professional, we use your Wayne State email. That's how we uh, respond to you. And that is the account that you should use for all communications with your prof uh, professors and with Wayne State School of Social Work. Any questions there? I don't see any hands raised. Okay, and then let's just talk a little bit about ethics. I heard yesterday that Ms. Oliveira touched that heavily about relationships. So I won't go into that. But I will just talk a little bit about you're going to be in, most of you will be in a setting where you may have some access to confidential information. As an example, in child welfare, you might tell your friends, hey, I'm working at CPS in Wayne County, blah, blah, blah. And so your friends may say, hey, could you tell me that um, if my neighbor has a CPS case? Um, okay, just a minute and I'll answer your question. Um, so for confidentiality, you're going to have to tell your neighbor, I cannot share any information about a CPS case. Even if you do get access to it, that is confidential and it is unprofessional to share information about any CPS case. Just like now where I'm at the medical um, examiner's office, if I know like manner and cause of death, I can't look up something for someone on a personal level. I would tell them they need to call the front desk and ask their, um, and their questions would be answered. So case history, um, and if you're, I don't know if any BSW students go to the public schools or a medical setting, but you need to check with your practicum instructor, but the most important thing to do is follow the NASW Code of Ethics. We and HIPAA, information is confidential and you can get yourself in a lot of trouble, not only with the agency that you're placed at, but also with the School of Social Work. Okay, it looks like Dr. Carr answered the question along with the student, so thank you. Nancy, so, can I ask you a question regarding sure. the email situation? Sure. So, uh, at my practicum, I was given an email for that agency that I'm at. So uh -huh. I'm I'm using that email to speak with my practicum instructor back and forth. But with the liaison, do I get, I still use my, with the liaison, I still use my Wayne State email, correct? Not the one from that agency. Correct. Okay. Just because with your liaison, um, you just, sorry, you just want to make sure that you are, um, sorry, I'm still getting phone calls, you, that the Wayne State information is confidential. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Any other questions while we're taking a little bit of a break? Okay. I can um, actually speak on emails. I have okay. a, a lot of emails. Sorry to cut you off, but I have a lot of emails. You can actually merge your emails. If you if you fancy like that, because all my emails come to my cell phone, but they all are merged. 
so I don't miss any emails. If you guys are fancy like that, like you just merge your emails into one setting. If you want to add them to your cell phone, if I know a lot of us use our cell phones, you can put them all under your same email. So you, everyone, it'll be separate, but it's all merged. So you don't have different places that you're looking for emails. Well, and I'll just add to that. I had a student that did that last year, but then she missed some important emails from Wayne State. So I don't know if she just merged them incorrectly or I, I'm not sure. So I'm not a technology expert, but I would just use caution doing that. I'll just say. And I don't know if Dr. Carr wants to speak to that. I do think it's a great idea to have the emails on your phone. I absolutely agree with you because I have all my emails set up on my phone, but I, I don't have them merged though. I have them each individualized on my phone. Um, I ain't fancy like y'all. I'm, I'm kind of old. So I need them individualized so I can see who's emailing me, but that's just me. <laughs> but I do have them set up on my phone because I agree with you. You need to have them there so you can see and so that you can respond when you need to respond. So having them on your phone, that's a great idea. Absolutely put them there. Um, but I go a little step further because I just have to be organized. Each email on my phone is a different color. So when I see each the colors pop up, I know what it is. So Wayne State on my phone is green. And I'm like, Nancy, I teach at different schools as well. So another school I teach at is Arizona College. So when Arizona comes up, they are red. You know, for my personal, it's my favorite color. So it's purple that pops up. So I know what each one is. But having it on your phone is absolutely a great idea to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carr. Okay, so, and then my last uh, tip for success is when you're in your practicum, I say treat every day as a job interview. And what I mean by that is go every day and be successful with your best um, presence forward. And I, can, I can't tell you how, you know, I've supervised interns for years and I can name intern after intern that was hired just because they were optimistic, professional. Um, and even at the Emmy's office, just this last year, we, two of our interns were hired and I, I am just so proud of them. But the difference is they um, showed their professionalism and even in child welfare, I can name intern after intern that were hired just because of their demeanor, their dress, their time in attendance. Um, and I didn't even have to recommend them for jobs. They they were observed by other personnel and said, I want them. What can I do to hire them? So just keep that in mind. Every day is a job interview. And if you're the intern, I had interns coming in at 10 o'clock when the office opened at 8. And I had other interns walking in at 8 o'clock or 7.55. People are watching you and they're observing your work performance. And it's very important. Okay, so any questions before we move on to um, our favorite topic, process recordings? Okay, so the first question, and let's see if I can do a screen share. Let's see. Um, I got a... Do my advance and get my download. Where's my screen share? Sorry, no. Uh oh, Dr. Carr. Um, hang on. Oh, I need to get that off.
Well, maybe, I don't know, Dr. Carr, I'm having trouble bringing up the um, process recording on the um, website. Well, on the video that I'm going to show, it'll be there. Okay. All right. Then I won't worry about it because I don't want to waste time. So okay. um, I, first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about process recording. And a lot of students um, ask me, why do we have to do five process recordings each semester? And it seems to take so much time and we always have so many other assignments to do. And I'll just answer that by saying um, process recordings are a reflective tool and it is really a way for you to get in touch with your feelings and um, a way to you for you to record your um, it's a teaching device for you to refine your interviewing skills and intervention skills and it helps you conceptualize um, the activities you're doing with client systems. So yes, you do have to do five process recordings each semester, and it's an opportunity for you to reflect and explore your own values and have an open dialogue with your uh, practicum supervisor. Hopefully, you know you the deadlines are um, outlined in the on the website. You have the first one due September twentieth, which is also when you have your learning plan due. And so that poses usually the next question from students, which is my first process recording is due September 20th. And how am I supposed to complete that if I haven't even started working with any clients yet? And I will just say that normally, um, if you haven't started with any clients yet, you can also use a process recording to reflect on maybe you've been to a meeting um, like with uh, other staff members, or you can also do a process recording like on an individual meeting you've had with your practicum liaison, or like I said, an orientation training, um, but you're going to be providing dialogue about a meeting and then you choose a specific part of that training or orientation is one option. Um, like for my staff, they might observe me on the phone providing um, crisis counseling to someone who's grieving over the loss of a loved one. So maybe another option would be if you are in a site, you're gonna be observing another employee um, providing or interviewing an individual at your site. So, and Dr. Carr is right, you either do a process recording or praxis. I thought most BSW students do process recordings though. So sorry for my confusion. We okay. have uh, MSW Foundation here too. Oh, okay, that's right. All right, so the dates are listed for the process recordings and um, we'll just get to the very start of it. Um, so. When we talk about a process recording, the um, I will say, in my experience, the biggest reason that a student gets their process recording returned, and I will tell you as both the practicum instructor and um, practicum liaison, is we start with the content for the student, and they're missing the introduction. In my opinion, that's one of the most important parts. So... You have to have the introduction on each process recording. And in, when you think about a process recording, it's a standalone document. So even if you're doing a process recording on each, um, for each, you're using the same client, I will say, for each process recording, it's a standalone document, so you still have to have an introduction on each process recording. So for the introduction that always starts your process recording, you need your client name and you'll use a pseudonym and identify it as a pseudonym. And then, or if you're using a training, you should identify it as a training. You need the age of the client, the marital or, um, or relationship status of the client and say you're at a school and you're using a child then you can just say not applicable. Occupation, if obviously if it's a child, you can say education, or if it's an adult, you can say occupation and education. The number of times that you have seen the client prior to this session 
and then the goals for that session or contact. So that's, I think, pretty self-explanatory, but I can't tell you how many students forget to provide the introduction, and it has to be on every process recording. Um, so when you're creating the process recording, you always want to start with that. Um, someone's asking about the temp template. It, I, for some reason, I can't share my screen and show it, but the template is at the Wayne State School of Social Work. It's available. And then the next part um, is the dialogue, and that's a word-for-word -word description of what happened um, to the extent that you can recall. Now, obviously, if someone's observing me doing a crisis intervention, um, they can do a word-for-word -word because they're listening to me. Uh, someone else is asking, oh, are you answering that, Dr. Carr? Yeah, but they wanted to know the difference between the process recording and the praxis, but you can explain that whenever you get to that. Okay, so um, for the dialogue, you do a word-for-word -word description of what happened to the best you can recall. So if you're the one, like, um, say you're taking a, uh, say you're at, um, like, a center um, for behavioral studies and you're doing the intake with a client, you may not be able to take complete notes and do word for word, but you can do a synopsis and do as best you can recall what was the dialogue. Or if you're observing a meeting, you want to describe the event in detail and focus on a specific part that impacted you. Um, it should be as best you can. It should read like a script. And um, sometimes there I have seen like students just do like a sentence or two, but you really need like a good chunk of detail so that the reader has a context for what occurred. And so sometimes I do send them back because I, I just say I need more detail. And sometimes I may sound like I'm a very difficult person and I understand that this is a learning environment. So usually the first one, I'm a little bit more flexible, but I say a sentence like opportunities for um, improvement include, please add more detail so that I can understand the context of the um, 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 intake or whatever you were doing. Um, and then next, it's um, the section is students gut level feelings. This is where you talk about your feelings and some examples could be, oh man, I was feeling really anxious or I was happy. Um, I can tell you, uh, for example, last year when my students make calls to families and they um, would say, I was really nervous. I'm not really good at making crisis calls. And I was worried how the family would respond to me or in child welfare, they go out and make visits. And so they would say, I wasn't sure if they would let me in the door. So you talk about your um, feelings of anxiousness or I was so happy that they responded such and such a way. Um, so you identify some of your feelings and they can be nonverbal messages that affect your interaction between you and the client. And then that gives you a better idea of your conscious use of self. But you want to avoid being judgmental. Um, you're just talking about your feelings, scared, happy, anxious, etc. And it's about your new role at your placement site. So that's students' gut level feelings. And then the next section is analysis. And this describes what has happened and why. And it allows you to kind of think about your response and reason for selecting the response. And you should state like what you think, what you may be thinking or feeling. And you also analyze your feelings. But remember, it's your gut level feelings. And we also want to avoid judgment. And I'll give an example. I had a student that was working at like a therapy center for pregnancy and postpartum moms. And I don't remember the whole conversation, but she was observing the therapist and the the client had said something about getting a, like a debit card for a teen. And the student said, I don't think a teen, a 15 year old should have a debit card. 
that's a judgment. We, you know, as therapists, social workers, we have to put our values aside. We don't include judgments. So that's analysis. So if you're shadowing someone, you identify and evaluate the skills you observe, but remember, avoid judgments. This is an opportunity for learning. Now, the part that I left out on the um, process recording is the practicum instructor's comments, which is to the uh, very far left of the grid. And that is where your practicum instructor will uh, provide statements that will help you grow and development. And remember, this is a tool for self-discovery, reflection, and I really do hope that your practicum instructor is talking with you about it in your weekly supervision. Um, I'm going to be honest, um, there aren't um, requirements for the length and type, um, type of interview, um, and I'm also going to be realistic as a practicum liaison. Sometimes I see process recordings where practicum instructors just approve it and there are no comments, but I, when I talk to the student, they tell me that the practicum instructor reviewed it with them, and so that's, that's good. What I do get more concerned about is when I talk to students, especially BSW students, where they tell me they've had no clinical supervision and there's never any comments on their process recordings. If that's the case, please talk to your practicum liaison because then you're not receiving an opportunity for reflective supervision or any opportunity to talk about anything that's going on in your practicum. And, and we really, you know, that we that's a concern. We want you to be receiving reflective supervision. And we don't want to hear about that in December. We need to be hearing about that at the latest at your first site visit, which should be happening sometime in October. All right, so Dr. Carr said someone had a question about the difference between process recording and praxis. So I'll do my best. I'm not macro, I'm clinical, but praxis is more for individuals who are in a macro placement. And there they would be doing, they don't have the clinical piece to their praxis. So there, I'll just say maybe they're observing or going to a meeting talking about fundraising. So um, they will talk, it, it's more like, I, I always think of it as you take the whole clinical piece out. And so say they go, they're at an agency, they could still be at like children's service or um uh, I'll say children's services, but they're thinking about how they're going to raise money for a next benefit. And so they're observing the meeting and they're talking about the different um, uh, gender and racial makeup of the crowd. How were they treated and what were the objectives? I don't have a praxis in front of me, but they talk about what were the objectives of the meeting and did they um, feel like kind of like welcome to the meeting and were the goals and objectives of the meeting met? That's kind of just way off the top of my head. I didn't read praxis last year, but you basically you take the clinical piece out and you, you still do the um, interactions and you talk about were you um, accepted and were there any, do you have any suggestions for any opportunities for improvement? I'll put it like that. Does that help? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, all right. So that is, excuse me, that is pretty much the main talk about, um, of the content and any questions about that? Because then I want to go to the wrap up, which is also very important on the process recording. Megan has her hand up. Okay, Megan. Hi, uh, this um this may be a crazy question, but no, no crazy questions. Do we put in um the comments for our practicum instructor or do they put it in? They put the the comments in for you. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's where I do hope they put comments in, or like I said, sometimes practicum instructors don't put them in, but then that's where I hope in your clinical supervision that they have talked with you about it. Okay, all right, so now we're going to go to the wrap-up. And so the first question is, provide an evaluation of your overall skill during the session. 
And so if you observe someone, you'll talk about how you're the kind of the guest observer. So you'll talk about how they did. Were they an active listener? Um, do you think they had an impact on the client experience? Or you'll talk about your skill. Um, and, and that's where you can kind of be open and honest. I think I did a good job. Um, I think I, heard, um, like I've had uh, students say, I, um, like last year, I, I think I was like open and honest and I really reflected back what this parent was telling me or I was so nervous, I totally missed whatever. But you're just open and honest about um, what happened Um if you observed a training, you'll evaluate what you learned from the training or how you'll incorporate this information in your, um, at your placement. And so the next question is, how do you see yourself as being effective during the session? What would you like to improve? And this is another place where you can talk about, well, I was so nervous on the phone. Um, at the medical examiner's office, we always do a short biopsychosocial. And so a lot of times my students would say, oh, I was so nervous, I forgot to do the biopsychosocial, which um, I'm sure all of you know, but we forgot to ask them, how were they sleeping? How were they eating? What's their support system? Or I was so nervous, I just jumped right through it. And then I hung up and I forgot to ask what their email was so I could send them resources. So you can just maybe talk about, I like if you're on the phone with a client, maybe you have to call them back to get more information. Um, or I, I realize now, and you'll be talking with your uh, clinical supervisor about this too, but I realize I just need to slow down. I need to take a breath when I'm on the phone. And, it, and they, you know, most clients understand that you're an intern and it's okay if you make a mistake and you have to call back. So um, any questions there? Okay, another hot topic. What questions do you have for the reader so you can receive feedback on your skills? And then it says, no, general questions are not acceptable. They must be specific questions and must have depth. I can tell you right now, a lot of practic practicum liaisons will return it as they should if you do not have questions because you can't say there, I don't have any questions. And then one question that I usually have to talk to the student about is, you can't just say, how did I do? <laughs> I mean, we're going to be talking to you about it. So that's not, you know, that's kind of more of a general question. Um, but you, you can ask, do you think I was effective in how I use motivational interviewing? Or do you think I was effective in exploring um, the client's um, discussion on grief? Or do you think I was effective in talking to Johnny about his behavior in the classroom, et cetera? So it can't just be one, it can never be, I don't have any questions. Because remember, this is a learning opportunity. And then second, it can't um, just be, how did I do? It needs to be a little bit more specific. And both your practicum instructor and your practicum liaison will work with you on that. And then lastly, another question that usually um, can get a process recording returned is, please identify the theory or theoretical perspective or intervention model that you used in your work with the client or client system in order to demonstrate your understanding of the application of theory to social work practice. Please identify and explain the specific theory-based interventions you use with the client client system, discuss why you use this intervention. I have seen so many process recordings where students say NA or I followed agency guidelines. And sometimes you may say that because sometimes it's appropriate. But if you're at process recording two or three, that's not appropriate. And remember, practicum coincides with your classes that you're taking. So can anybody suggest uh, a theory that might be appropriate with the process recording? So are you talking about any theories in your classes? Like an ecological? Uh -huh. 
Right, yeah. like social, social economic situations. Okay. Or life, or life cycle events. Yeah. Um, or, or even like um, pathways or um, uh, I can't think of the word. Um, the way the trajectories that are being used in the person's life and how they're going. Yeah, I would say that relates well to systems theory. The trajectories of how their life is going. Um, I would also add, I'm I'm big. I'm currently on the class. I'm teaching solution focused interviewing. Um, Hunter is saying social learning theory. Exactly. At the Emmy's office, we use crisis theory a lot. Um, Angie's saying strengths perspective. Absolutely. So. In that question, that's what we're looking for. Um, you can't say no theory. You're in class, and um, oh, Hunter's also saying psychosocial development theory. Absolutely. See, you all know these answers. So when you get to that question, you can't say no theory. We know the theories. Abby is also saying, where do we find? Oh, Dr. Carr's going to answer that question. So we know the answers to these theories. So. Um, all right, so I think you all know the theories. Um, and so now I'm going to answer, I, um, pose a few other questions. Um, suppose, um, so we have the deadline of September 20th for both your learning plan and your process recording. Um, suppose your process recording gets returned by this mean, evil person, me, Nancy Keller, um, because you didn't include the introduction, um, and we already talked about this a little bit. I said it's got to be a standalone document. Um, but then does that mean that you're in then suppose you didn't do as I said, and you don't look at your Wayne State email because I, if I return it, I'll tell you what happens. I'm going to remove your signature approval, which I have the ability to do as a liaison, and I'm also going to remove your practicum instructor's approval, which you should get an email, but not everybody sees it. But then as a courtesy, because I am a professional, I'm also going to send you and your practicum instructor an email. Oh, um, by the way, I'm returning your process recording because you did not include your introduction, which is a required element or another reason, which may seem very petty, but remember, we are all professionals. Um, you should spell, spell check your work. And I recommend, hey, Grammarly.com is free for all students. Load it on your computer. I use it myself because I am not the best speller. And before you submit a document, just spell check it. it you know, remember that these are perfect uh, professional documents that get put in your file and so you want it to be professional and so if it is returned um you need to make those corrections and so i will uh, send you as a professional i'll send you an email to your wayne state email but is it considered late that's a question of the hour so i recommend that you do your process recording um a couple days early, at least the first one. Um, and then if if your practicum instructor or your practicum liaison does not approve it by September 20th, it is not considered late. As long as you have it in by September 20th, you are on time. Now, obviously, we provide a lot of grace on the first or second one. And you don't actually get a letter grade in practicum you just get satisfactory, unsatisfactory, or incomplete. And we will talk about any areas of concern in your PASC. Um, but you do want to um, make sure you're providing your best work. And like I said, we work with you. We understand the first process recording can be challenging. But I have faith in all of you that you're going to do an absolutely fantastic job. Um, so I think I have covered most of the things I wanted to cover and it's 1045. So I'm going to open it up. Is there, are there any questions that you would like to ask? Uh, Bailey, it says her hand. 
Okay, go ahead. Hi, good morning. I just had a quick question regarding um, Praxis. So I'm a macro student. I won't be seeing any clients or anything in my placement, but when I go into IPT, the form that's uploaded is um, the process recording one and not the Praxis one. Should I reach out to my liaison to confirm that? Are they the ones that upload those forms for us to complete? Well, no. it if I'm not mistaken, I thought all students, um, whether they were macro or clinical, have to do two process recordings first, and then the last three can be praxis. But am I incorrect on that? So, yes, I, I've been typing in the chat like several times that your liaison is the one who determines what happens regarding the process recordings and the praxis. So really don't worry about it let me just say that don't worry about it please get with your liaison about it because they help make the determination of, of which one you get so you won't get a hundred percent um praxis even if you are supposed to get praxis let's say that um, they won't, like Nancy said, it won't be all practice. You know, you will have some process recordings to do. But again, it's up to the liaison and what they deem fit because it's all based upon what type of placement you have and what type of student you are. So it's not one size fit all. It depends on you as a student. It depends on your placement. Um, and so again, I keep typing in the chat. It depends on your liaison and what they deem fit. So Nancy is kind enough to show us the process recording because everybody's got to do a process recording. That is the main one. But there is a difference between process recording and practice. So we do want you to understand there is a difference. But if you want clarity on what you have to do individually, that is a question for you and your liaison. And so if you have not made communication with your liaison yet, please feel free to reach out to your liaison if they have not reached out to you first. If you don't know who your liaison is, you are welcome to look on IPT. And if you look right underneath your birthday, there should be a name there. And whoever that name is, that is your uh, liaison. If you do not have a name there, you can email the office or email me and say, Dr. Carr, I don't have a name there. Please let me know who my liaison is. And I am more than happy to let you know who that person is and we can get you going. But everybody's situation is different, but it is up to the liaison what you're going to be doing. So please just make sure for that particular situation, you reach out to your liaison. Cool. And I think somebody had a question about a liaison not responding. Um, I would just suggest go back and check your IPT and make sure you've got the right person because sometimes people get changed and then email Dr. Carr just to confirm. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Let me know if you have reached out and they are not responding to you. Uh, let me know. Just let me know. I had a question. So I'm looking at the um, website. So all the things we need, like I see process recording, practice, all that is listed there, correct? As what um, the speaker, our guest speaker just said in detail, correct? Do you mean as far as the due dates for process recordings? Um, process? I'm just talking about the process, like of what you're looking for. All of that is listed. I'm looking, let me see. Documents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all it's all in detail. I my notes were taken right off the Wayne State School of Social Work website. And again, I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to share the document, but um it, it all worked last night perfectly. So I'm so sorry. But yes, it is taken right off the Wayne State School of Social Work website. Yes, I see it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, if I can just ask a question, I don't know if it was answered or not, but I have a unique case because, so the first process recording is due um, around the 20th, and my um, my practicum orientation is on the 9th of September, 
So I don't know if I'm going to have ample time to be trained and then to be delegated my own first case by then to do a process recording or can I do a process recording as I'm being oriented and being trained underneath somebody? Like, how is that going to work for me? Yes. I, as I said, you can use your orientation meeting as your first process recording. You just have to designate in your introduction, um, it, identify that as your training session. Okay. Thank you. And, and also, you know, make sure, you know, work out with your practicum instructor the, um, as to how you're going to complete your learning plan, because your learning plan is also due September 20th. Yeah, that's just what I'm kind of worried about. Like, so I'm a Windsor student. So like the semester's here. I think that he planned the orientation based off of Canadian timelines. So oh. I think that's why I'm starting everything a little bit later than everybody else. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I'm hoping that like he'll be flexible so I can get everything done in time. <laughs> okay. Well, just stay in touch with your practicum liaison as well, and they can help you, um, um, work it out. Yeah. I, I, um, spoke to Dr. Carr about, uh, my liaison yesterday. I still have not heard from him. So I'm going to reach out again today just to be like, Hey, just because I did send him a pretty lengthy email, just, um, stating my situation, but I haven't heard back from him yet, so I don't know if he's just waiting until my orientation date, which I outlined in that first email. I'm not really sure. Well, I, I'm not trying to defend practicum liaisons, but most liaisons also have like other commitments, and we were also going to have a meeting today, so I'm, I'm thinking, not trying to defend them, but maybe some were going to wait until after we had a meeting today, which has now been postponed, so hopefully they, okay. they all, if they haven't already reached out, uh, like I already sent my addendum to the syllabus and a welcome to all my um, students who are under me, so hopefully they will all reach out. It's, you know, Time is now, you know, some some wait until after Labor Day because some practicum sites, even though practicum started last week, this week, some some practicum sites don't start until after Labor Day. So it just depends. And like I said, I'm not trying to defend people. I just know how sometimes things go, but hopefully he or she will respond. OK, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to take one more question for Rachel. I hope I pronounced that right. And then I'm going to go to the next step so we can actually show you what everything looks like in IPT, if that's okay, Nancy. Sure. Okay. Is it Rachel? Hi, yes. Um, okay. Hi, I was just wondering if we could get more information about what the learning plan and like expectations for what the final product of that should look like. I've looked over the template in IPT, but it's just, I'm unfamiliar with it. This will be the first time I'm completing a document like that. Uh, so I just wanted more information about that. You said what it looks like, what it physically looks like? Is that what you said? Well, like what the expectations are in terms of completing it. Like what is it that we and our practical instructor are supposed to be filling out? Like what are the expectations? Well, I'm going, I'm about to show everybody what it looks like now, and, and hopefully that'll help answer your question. Um, but the expectation for the learning plan, um, which is what was discussed yesterday, is that you all fill that out together. The practicum instructor and the student fill out the learning plan together. Um, because that is going to be what you all work on throughout the whole semester. So sometimes some practicum instructors will say, oh, you go fill that out and I sign it after. And that is not what is supposed to happen. You all are supposed to sit down and do that together. And it's supposed to be a living document, meaning that sometimes it may change throughout the semester. And if it does, that's okay. 
Um, but that learning plan is supposed to be done together. And then that first process recording is supposed to be done right after. And both of those are due September 20th um, at the same time. But um, I'm going to show a video because Diane is or was our secretary and she has now since retired and she was the one who kind of went over everything in IPT. And Rachel, if the video does not answer your question, I want you to come back and let me know that so that we can answer your question effectively and appropriately, okay? Because I do want you to get the answer that you are looking for. Um, but these things that you are doing, they do take some time, especially the learning plan may take some time with your practicum instructor, um, at least 30 minutes or more, because you want to effectively complete them. Um, these are not things that should be rushed. They're really things that should be uh, thought about. But in the video, we will go through IPT itself and what these documents look like, how you get to them. And um, you want to take that information with the knowledge that Nancy gave to you um, and put combine those together and how it should be completed. Okay. Ms. Diane Kennedy, and in this presentation, I'm going to show you how to access your forms in your forms folder in IPT. First, we're going to open your student detail page. You'll need to log in, and at the top, you will see a home tab. Click on your home tab, and on the left, you in the gray sidebar, you'll see a My Forms link. Right now, it says there are three forms waiting for you. We're going to click on this to open your forms folder. And as you'll see, you have three forms. First column tells you the name of the form. You have your time log, process recording, and student learning plan. All students should have these three forms once the school year starts. If you don't see that form, please contact the Office of Practicum Education and we'll make sure we load them into your folder. Uh, the status column here just tells you if it's active or new. New means it hasn't been open. Active means you may have started it and saved it. And it's waiting for student in each of these cases to complete it. This will change once you sign it. If it's waiting for the practicum instructor to sign off on it, their name will be here. And this column here shows the due date. Let's start by opening the process recording. To open your process recording, you'll need to fill out the top information. Make sure you keep saving your work as you go along. If you scroll down here, you will see uh, columns in rows. We're going to add a row. You can click to add segment to take a row out. Delete a row. If you have made a mistake and want to change it, just delete it. You want to add an, another row to your conversation, just click here, save your work. And if you scroll to the bottom, you see click to sign completed document. When you click on this, you can usually, a uh, box will come up to sign it. If you get this red box, then you will need to go back up and look for required. That means this is a required field, so you cannot sign off on it. It will not take your signature as long as you're missing some information. So in this case, you'd have to come back and finish these questions here before it will accept your signature. And the same thing pretty much for your learning plan. Click on here, fill in the necessary information. Each field will have an icon with a pencil and paper that you need to fill in. If there's no icon there, that means this is not for you to fill in. You scroll all the way down, again, 
where you see student sign signature, you will click to sign it. And again, if you want to go back and work on it, this is something your student learning plan you should work on with your practicum instructor. Um, just click on save and you can come back and work on it at a later time. I'm going to close this. I'd like to show you how to do your time log. Your time log, again, we're going to fill out the top heading. You're going to fill in by rows. If you see here, I've started out the first row is week one. Week one could have um, more than your two days that you're normally in field or your three days. Uh, for example, you're in orientation on August 16th. So we're going to type in August 16th. I was in orientation. I just put OR to designate that it wasn't a regular day. You had four hours. And then you're going to complete your hours for your two days that you were scheduled. Let's say on August 27th and 29th, you did eight hours. And then the following week on uh, September 2nd and the 4th, you both did eight hours. You do not put the totals in. As you'll see, the totals will automatically fill in once you save the form. If I was going to go in and put 914, I did eight hours. Let's say that week. For some reason you were sick, you only did eight hours that week, then that is all that will go in that row for the third week. This way your practicum instructor and liaison can see if you've been in eight hours or 16 hours for the week. If you click save here, as you'll see, it automatically filled in the week for you and gave you the cumulative total. This makes it easy for both our office and your liaison to look and see if you've been doing 16 hours a week or if you're missing hours. Please make sure you do not sign your time log until the end of the semester. This is the only form that only gets signed once a semester. If you do sign it now, then it will lock the form and you won't be able to add any more hours. If this should happen, call our office and we can release the signature. If you have, let's close this. If you have questions on how to fill out your time log, your process recording, if you will go to the social work website under practicum education, and IPT, you'll see documents and assignments. There is a student learning plan example and a process recording and a time log that you can take a look at. And if you have questions, your faculty liaison is always there to assist you. Thank you and have a good day. All right. Anybody have any other questions? This, yes, this may be kind of not a smart question, but so for the plan of work, we just go into the practicum and fill it out with our instructor, or do we do we write it out differently, like type it up or something, and then trend? Okay. okay. Everything is going to be right there on the document in IPT. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yep, yep. Rachel, I want to come back to you to make sure. Um. Well, I guess I didn't really cover the learning plan. Um, yeah, I guess I just, <laughs> my question is so fundamentally like, if there's like an example of a completed learning plan we could look at, I guess I'm just wondering like what, what is Those the expectation that we are expected to like hand in by September 20th? I just want like an example so I know what, I understand that it will be individualized my practicum and that I'm going to be doing it collaboratively with my practicum instructor 
instructor, excuse me, I just would like, I just, want, I guess, want to know more specifically, like, what the document should kind of look like, like, what are we inputting? Does that make sense? I'm trying to communicate as clearly as I can. Yeah, those are on the website. So if you go okay. to our website, like Nancy was saying, there, there are some examples on there for you. Any other questions? Tier? Um, I do have a question. First off, I want to say that was a great example. Answered definitely a lot of my questions. But in the process log, I understand it kind of goes by week. It has like five days in it. But my practicum is um like seven days a week, um, evenings and weekends. So sometimes it just goes more than five days. So how would I input it in that process log, like if it goes past the five days? So you're going to practicum seven days a week? Um, it's just, it's kind of really like open, kind of. I'm doing mine at the National Kidney Foundation, and yeah. they're kind of doing things like generally kind of like every day. My practicum instructor is aware that I work 40 hours. Like I work in the morning first, so I'll be doing mine kind of in the evening. So just in case she said kind of work with her, but the um, practicum place is open seven days a week. So different projects kind of that I want to work on and I want to get to learn, they may fall on different times. So right. it just may be more than five days, possibly. You You put it in the days that you're there, not necessarily the seven days. So basically, I shouldn't be at my practicum no more than five days out the week. No, you you can go when you want to go. I'm not telling you not to do that. But what I'm saying is, I mean, if you go seven days, you go seven days. I I'm not gonna tell you not I got, to go. I got to get the hours some way how I can. <laughs> if I wait for it, time. But if you wind up going seven days, if you wind up going seven days. That's fine. We'll work it out as far as the form is concerned. We might have to just overlap it somehow on the or put it on to the next week. You know what I mean? But we'll figure it out as far as the form is concerned. I want you to go when you can go so that you can get your hours. Okay. And so like we'll Okay. And um also just in case, my um I'm learning a little bit more about my practical mission every day. They don't it's a macro place, mm -hmm. so it's they don't really necessarily work with clients. Right. Um, okay. So the things in like my learning plan would mm -hmm. probably you said it kind of depends on each person in their placement. Would I just if I have any issues, would I just talk to my liaison about it? Yep, just talk to your liaison. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Yes. Um. So this might be a little silly question, and maybe my brain is just overthinking it. But um, for the time logs, um, so when it's asking the day and date, so like for example, this boot camp, it went over like four days during like the one week. So what do we exactly put down for the day and date since it's like week one, but it's a multitude of dates? So some people want to put everything in one day. Some people put four hours under one day, which is fine. Um, some people did it um, like Monday was one day for an hour. Tuesday was another day for an hour. Um, it just depends because everybody came at different times. Uh, so, it, I mean, it just depends on the person and how they came. Some people came on Tuesday, but they did the morning and the afternoon. So that's one day for two hours. Well, 
You You just... know what? I'm just re-looking at it and I realized I was reading the form wrong. I was reading it only laterally and I wasn't reading it vertically at all. So I thought that like we filled in the first thing, then we go to the next one, then we go to the next one. Like if the space got filled up. So it's like for the week one, it's I, I answered my own question. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No worries. No worries. Ms. Garwood. Um, hi, I have a quick question. Um, yes. are there quizzes um are, are the quizzes in Canvas mandatory? No. So I thank you so much for bringing that up. I appreciate you. It was on my mind. You helped me remember. The quizzes in um Canvas are only for the people who are doing this. Uh, with the videos. If you are, I said this before, if you are doing this live, I call this live because we together, we talking, we together, right? If you are doing this live, you do not need to take the quizzes at all. You are here with me. You are here with Nancy. We are talking. We don't need to quiz each other. We together, right? We know what's going on, okay? So no quizzes are needed. The quizzes are only for the individuals who have to watch the video. As I said, the videos are not up in Canvas yet, right? They're not there. They will be there within a week. So the quizzes go with the video. The individuals who have to watch the video have to take the quizzes in order to get their hours, in order to get their credit. Once they watch the video and they take the quiz, they get their hours. That's the only way they're able to get their hours is to watch the video and take the quiz. You all who are here with me live and have been with me all week live automatically get your hours. That's why you are able to just go ahead and go to your time log and write everything in because we together. And I got your name on the list. I know who you are. You're able to just enter in your information. You do not have to answer or take any quizzes. So you all who have been taking quizzes, and I noticed that this morning, I'm sorry that you have done that for no reason. I'm not sure why you did that. I don't know who told you to do that, but I know I did not. So please stop taking quizzes because you do not have to. We are together. So <laughs> the quizzes go with the videos and the videos are not up yet. So you do not have to take any videos. Again, the videos are for, uh, the videos and the quizzes go together. The videos are not up. They will be up within a week. And whoever watches the videos do have to take the quizzes. And that's how those individuals get their hours, okay? If you are live with me today, yesterday, um, Tuesday, Monday, you automatically get your hours because I have your names on a list. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Question. I was not here on Monday, so I still have to do that one for Monday and take the quiz. Yep. So if you were not here and you have to watch a video, then you have to do a quiz. Yes. Okay. okay. Yep, yep, yep. Miss one Bates. more question. Oh, sorry. And with that. I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to provide resources because I know we've been talking about professional clothing. Um, oh. So I'm an employment specialist at my job currently, and um, Career Dress is a great resource. It's in Pontiac. So they give out a lot of free professional clothing. Um, it's only for women, though. I'm, I'm trying to find resources for men. I think that's really hard for us to find professional clothing for men. But I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm not sure if the school, um, Wayne State, has like a professional closet or a clothing closet. But I just wanted to like mention that because we've been mentioning like, um, you know, ethics, code of ethics, um, presenting ourselves really well. So I just wanted to actually throw that resource out there and I can put the information in the chat box, like the phone number address, if anybody would like it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Great resource. And yes, you can put boot camp on the time log for what we've been doing this week. Yes, that is fine. Yes, Miss Megan. Yeah, um, I think someone just answered the question, uh, said the question I had in the chat, but if we miss the session, 
and we watch the video um, and take the quiz, can that count as practicum hours? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. that's how you get your hours. You watch the video, you do the quiz, that's mm -hmm. how you get your hours. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Ms. Griffin. Um, if if you miss the video, it's not mandatory to have to do the boot camp, is it? No, the like, is it optional? Yes, it's optional. The boot I mean, camp if I did, I did it myself personally, but I be have I see questions of that type ask, so I just wanted to be sure to help someone else that it's only optional if you prefer to do it or not. It's not mandatory. Absolutely. Yes, yes, great question. Absolutely, it is optional. Totally optional. Nobody has to do it. It is just for your information if you need to. Tierra, Miss Tierra. Um, this may be a dumb question. Um, I don't know what it is with quizzes. They just make me a little anxious. How many times can you take the quiz if you miss it? Oh, I, I don't even know. I don't think it's a limit. Honestly, I, I don't think it's a limit on there. So, but, but trust me, the questions are not that hard to where it's only five questions. And it's not that hard. I, I don't think you'll miss it. But I, I don't think it's a limit, honestly. Okay, thank you. Yes. Ms. Thompson. Hi. Are we including our lunchtime on the log? Uh, I'm going to ask Nancy about that one. I, I don't think we do. I think... If you're at a site for eight hours and you take a half hour lunch, then you get 7.5 hours. I, I, and I'm going to say I talk to my faculty liaison, like I'm a faculty instructor at that site, and that's what I was told. Thank you. Just want to make sure I plug them in right. Because you're off the clock when you're at your lunch. Unless, of course, and Tricia, you know, because you, you're with me. Unless, of course, we're woofing down our lunch while we're answering phones. And then I would say, and then you didn't really have a lunch because you were, you know, woofing down your lunch doing something. But if you, like, take your lunch and go go to the lunchroom or et cetera, then you're, you're on your half-hour lunch. You don't have to subtract your breaks, only your own. Oh, and I see Hunter's answering and says lunch hours do not count towards internship hours. Thank you. Got it. Thanks, you guys. said that if you're working during your lunch hour, it does. Like if you're trying to catch up on paperwork and stuff like that, does that count? I'm going to say, yeah, talk to your faculty liaison. I, you know, I'm specifically answering Trisha because I'm her practicum instructor and we work at the morgue and sometimes we are swamped, and so we might have, I'm going to say, five minutes to uh, to swallow an apple. And so she uh, didn't really officially get a lunch, and so as her practic practicum instructor, I can confirm, hey, we didn't get a lunch today. We ate an apple as we were running from one thing to another. So I'm not, I am saying I can verify Trisha didn't get a lunch that day and I also didn't tell her she could leave early that can't you can't say that every single day because you know there are work rules and labor laws that say if you work a certain I think it's if you work over five hours you're supposed to take a break so that can't always be the answer but we where Trisha and I are at that's crisis intervention and there are some times and, and I would say the same thing for child welfare Sometimes you, you know, I used to tell child welfare workers, bring a protein bar and an apple with you because you just may not get lunch. But those should be isolated incidents. You can't always say, I'm not taking a lunch so I can get more hours in. That's few and far between. That's my answer. I'm deferring back to Dr. Carr. <laughs> <laughs> She's the boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you should always get a lunch. And if you don't get a lunch, you definitely should say something about it because you, you should. But yeah, in certain jobs and certain aspects, you know, you are humping. So, yeah. I saw somebody stated in the chat, you know, can I watch them over the weekend and log them all in? Um, as stated before, the videos are not up right now. They may not be up this weekend. 
Um, so I don't know about that. I will email you all once the videos get um, put onto Canvas. Um, hopefully they'll be up within a week. But as soon as they get put up, I'll let you all know. But you can watch the videos at your leisure. Whenever you want to watch them and then take the uh, quiz, you are welcome to do so. Area. Hi. So with the timesheet, do we put in our actual hours? Like if we did the um, training for an hour and 15 minutes, we put an hour and 15 minutes or we put it like as a timesheet, uh, like 1.25? It's 15 minute increments. Yes. You can use 15 minute increments. Okay. Yep. So everybody understand that. So it's like 8 o'clock, 8.15, 8.30, 8.45. Nine o'clock, 15 minute increments. Great question. Other questions for Nancy or myself? Always mentioning. Wait, just to be clear, so it's 8.15, 8.30, 8.45, and then on an hour. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm not understanding Ms. Williams' question. I must have missed the first part of it. It says, is this mandatory for MSW students? I'm not sure what that means. Oh, this is it. If it's the boot camp, nothing's mandatory. Boot camp at all is not mandatory for anybody, as stated before. It's it's clearly optional for any and everybody. If you want to participate, you are more than welcome to. If you don't, you don't have to. If you do participate, you get hours towards uh, the number of hours that you need. So it's totally up to you. Can you clarify the 15 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes? I, you lost me there. Yeah. yeah. So somebody, somebody was asking, how do you log the time on the timesheet? And you have to log it in 15 minute increments. You can't put like 801 on the timesheet. And so you have to log it in 15 minute increments. So if you get there at 805, you can't put 805. You have to put what's closer. So you probably put eight o'clock, you know, okay. or 15. Yeah. So I was just saying the, the times increments that you can put on there, you can put eight o'clock, 8.15, 8.30, 8.45, or nine o'clock. So you okay. have to put it on the 15s, if that makes Thank sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And Diane used to hate that. So I'm just telling you, <laughs> she used to try it for nuts. And so, you know, we have a new secretary. Her name is Nikita. She's awesome. So if you have any issues with your IPT system at all, don't email me. Email Nikita because I'm just going to tell you to email Nikita because I have nothing to do with IPT at all. Nikita is the uh, new IPT queen. Uh, Di Diane used to be our IPT queen. So um, any issues with IPT at all, go straight to Nikita. She will be the one to be able to help you directly. Okay. So, so for today, we can do this. Will be the first day we get to put the full hour and a half down for those people who have been rolling with me all week. <laughs> so, make sure today on your uh, time log, you can put the full hour and a half down to get all of your hours. Um, yeah. Any other? Oh. Am I missing somebody? Any? I see another hand. Yes, I don't want to miss you. Hi. Um, I'm sorry. Just to piggyback off the fifteen and the thirty, is that like about like um like when we get to internship and stuff? Like, what what is that for? I'm so sorry. For your time log, the time that you get, yeah, the time that you are at your internship and the time that you leave. So whatever time you get there, you you can't like put. 805 or you can't say I let I left at 233 you have to put it in 15 minute increments so whatever time you actually left or actually got there it has to be close to a 15 minute increment 
Right. So let's say, for example, we get there at eight, eight o'clock on the dot. Like our it starts at we could just put eight o'clock and stuff. Right. Right. Okay. And like and that's it, right? Like when we clock in and when we end. Correct. That would be the only times that you would put in there. Yes. And then um I have another one. Um I know this is scheduled and stuff. Not not scheduled, but like recorded for mm -hmm. uh future you know students and stuff um can, uh, am i on the list of students now i'm sorry just to check which you which mean what list honey like you know the list like how you said students on the route who came to the live oh yeah yeah so when you log in to get into the zoom it automatically uh you know adds you to the list okay good yeah, yeah. So everybody who logged in to get into the room, to the Zoom room, is automatically on the list. All right, because if you're a little late, is that, I'm sorry about that. Is that okay still? Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Oh. You. Don't worry about it. I was, a, I was a bit late. I'm sorry. It's okay. No worries. No worries. Yes. Well, the videos, once they're in Canvas, will they be there all semester? So, like, if we want to refer back to something, we can do that. Yes, yes. I have no intention on taking those out. <laughs> so yes, they will be there. Thank you. Yes. Abby, you have a question? Yeah, so I'm in my internship right now and I'm like doing this section now. So can I just, I don't have to, I'll just put like, I'll be here for eight hours. So I'll just put eight hours. Like it wouldn't be, it would be combined. You know what I'm saying? So I would... Well, you can for a whole day. Yeah, if you want to do it like that, you can. Okay. Yeah, you can't double count. So that's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. We on the edge, y'all. Uh, thank all you. Right. I enjoyed meeting you all and sharing. All right. I will see you this afternoon for our last session. You all have a wonderful day. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much, Nancy. We appreciate your time and your expertise. And you all have a great day. Thank you.